All right, so how many steps do you think we need to take to simplify this expression without using a calculator? Well, a lot of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, this is a super easy problem. Well, maybe it is and maybe it isn't. But let's take a look at the problem. Again, we're not going to use our calculator. We have the square root of 8 plus 1 over the square root of 8. Now, if you have the answer, put that into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to show you the steps to simplify this expression. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so let's take another look at this problem. And a lot of you might be saying, Mr. YouTube Math Man, this is the easiest problem in the world to simplify because we can just cross cancel these eights and the answer is one. Well, if this is your answer, that is fantastic. Unfortunately, that is incorrect. Now, a lot of you might be saying, all right, what gives here, Mr. YouTube Math Man? Well, I'm gonna fully explain this here in just one second, but probably the number one most common wrong answer here is going to be one. All right, so if you are taking any sort of algebra course or if you're working with square roots or radicals, you definitely need to know how to simplify a problem like this. But let's go ahead and take a look at the correct answer. The correct answer is the following, four plus the square root of two over four. Now this is the fully simplified answer to this problem. Now some of you, it's possible we're kind of going down the right track. In other words, you were doing some good steps here, but uh, it's possible that you may have uh, stopped too soon and you didn't finish the problem. But of course, I'm gonna show you all the steps that we need to take to solve this problem. But if you got this right, you definitely get a happy face and an A plus for your knowledge of square roots. That is fantastic. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this right now. Again, no calculators. And as I indicated, the number one mistake here is people are going to go, oh, I can just cross cancel these eights. They just look, uh, you know, so like um, inviting, right? It's like this one and this one, like, yes, please cross cancel me. And the answer is one. Well, as a math teacher of several decades, I've seen a lot of mistakes and this one is very typical. And uh, let's go ahead and just kind of see why this is absolutely not the case. So instead of the square root of eight, let's just kind of plug in some other numbers here, maybe like uh, three plus one over three. All right, so this is basically the same problem. We're just gonna replace the square roots of eights with three. So if I asked you to simplify this answer right here, or this fraction, three plus one over three, you would say, all right, three plus one, that is four over three. This is the fraction four thirds. Now, if you look at this, you're like, oh, I can cross cancel this three with this three, you're gonna come up with the answer of one. Well, one is clearly not the answer. The correct answer is four third, four thirds, excuse me. Now, the reason why this is such a confusing thing is that people confuse sum and differences with factors, okay? So for example, if I had three, well, let's take this uh, again, three plus two over three, and we'll compare this to three times two over three. Now, these numbers here are factors, okay? In other words, we have six, and the factors of six are three and two, or three and two are factors of six. So when you have like factors in the numerator and denominator, you can cross cancel. But here, these are not like factors, all right? This is part of a sum. Now, one good technique that you can do uh, anytime you have a sum or difference is to put that in parentheses, all right? So put this in grouping symbols. So if you recall your little PEMDAS, right? So the order of operations, you have to do what's inside of parentheses first before you do any division, okay? So sum, sums and differences are kind of grouped together. And if you need to put in some parentheses, that's not a bad idea. But this uh, mistake comes up over and over again, especially in algebra. And I'm gonna show you one more example here because it's that important. So if I have x plus y over x, and I told you to simplify this, a lot of uh, people would go, oh, here's an, an x and here's an x, I just cross cancel. And the answer is y. 
That is not right. Okay, so you might be saying, well, how do I do this? Well, again, x and y here are not factors. Okay, but if I had x times y, and I would write this like this in algebra, x, y over x, well, then now I could cross cancel like factors. All right, so don't feel bad if you got one as your answer. But now we need to get into the other elements of this problem. And there's actually uh, quite a few. So the first is we have a fraction because we have some value here and we're dividing by a square root. But really, this square root of 8 down here is what we call an irrational number. So if we go into our calculator and we take the square root of 8, we're going to get a decimal value that doesn't repeat and doesn't terminate. Okay, so this decimal value is going to go on and on and on until infinity. So for me to get this entire decimal, I would actually have to have a calculator that's infinitely wide. All right, so this is a problem when we're trying to divide something by a number that doesn't stop and doesn't repeat, a non-terminating decimal. Well, in mathematics, we don't like that, okay? So you have to be very careful when you're looking at fractions and if you have a square root in the fraction. Now, it could be a square root, let's say, let's say like the square root of 9. That's not a problem because the square root of 9 is equal to 3, okay? So, for example, if I had 10 over the square root of 9, this is no big deal because this is equal to 10 over 3 because the square root of 9 is 3. So the square root of 9 is a um, rational number, okay? It's not an irrational number because I can express it as a fraction or just a whole number, okay? So I don't want to get all technical about the real number system, but these are things that you need to understand. So specifically, you cannot have an irrational number in the denominator. So we're going to have to fix this, okay? So this is going to be the first aspect uh, to uh, simplifying this expression. We need to get rid of the square root of 8 in the denominator. And what do we need to do in order to do that? Well, we're going to have to multiply this entire thing by 1. So anything times 1 is what? Well, it's just uh, this thing right here, right? We're not going to break the problem. But what we're going to do is we're going to multiply by a very fancy 1. And that is going to be the square root of 8 over the square root of 8. Because anything divided by itself is simply 1. Okay, but if we use this fancy one and we multiply this expression by the square root of 8 over the square root of 8, again, this is 1, well, we're going to get rid of the square root of 8 down in the denominator. All right, so this is going to be the first step, and here is uh, what we're going to do. All right, so we're going to take this square root of 8 and we're going to multiply it uh, by the numerator, um, by the denominator and the numerator. Okay, so basically we're going to have this fraction, we're going to multiply it by this fraction. Now, I'm kind of stopping here because I kind of alluded to, these are like terrible multiplication uh, symbols. Here we go. That's a little bit better. All right, so how am I going to multiply the square root of 8 times the square root of 8? Well, you need to know something about the properties of square roots when it comes to multiplication. But how about the square root of 8 times the square root of 8 plus 1? How are we go uh, going to do this math right here? Well, uh, this particular problem is full of all types of opportunities to make a mistake, but let me go ahead and show you right now. Okay, so what we need to do is the following. We need to put this sum uh, in parentheses because we're going to be using this, uh, the distributive property here, and if you don't, it can be very confusing. All right, so always put your sums and differences in parentheses, and you're going to see here in just one second, we're going to use the, uh, the distributive property for the numerator, and then uh, the square root of 8 times the square root of 8. We'll see what the answer here is in just one second. All right, so let's go ahead and do the math. So the square root of 8, or square root of 8 times the square root of 8 is what? Well, anytime you're multiplying square roots, like the square root of 2 times the square root of 3, as long as there are square roots, we can just simply uh, multiply the numbers under the square roots under one big radical or one big square root. So this is equal to uh, the square root of 2 times 3 or the square root of 6. So the square root of 8 times the square root of 8 is going to be equal to the square root of 8 times 8 or 64. All right, so let's go ahead and see the results of this. Now, again, as I indicated, we have to use the distributive property. All right, so hopefully you understand what I'm doing here. And let me just show you a simple example. So uh, 2 times, let me use a different color here. All right, so from an algebra standpoint, if I had 2 times x plus 3, 
what is this equal to? Well, hopefully you know that's 2 times x. 2x plus 2 times 3, of course, is 6. All right, so this is an example of the distributive property, a super important example. So here we have to go uh, the square root of 8 times the square root of 8, which is going to be what? The square root of 8 times the square root of 8 is equal to the square root of 8 times 8, or the square root of 64. All right, so now uh, the square root of 8 uh, times 1, of course, is the square root of 8, and then square root of 8 times the square root of 8, again, the square root of 64. So our answer is the following. Okay, so we're getting closer, but uh, we still have a lot more work to do. And a lot of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, you know, I took the problem to this uh, point, and uh, you can see here that the square root of 64 is going to be a nice, lovely number here in just one second. But um, as I indicated, oftentimes students, you know, know the steps, but they quit, or they, you know, let's say they, they stop the problem too soon. They think they're fully simplified, or they think the problem is fully simplified, but in fact, it's not. All right, so let's go ahead and continue on. We have the square root of 64 plus the square root of 8 over the square root of 64. So let's take the next step, which, of course, is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, I definitely need your help to continue to help other people, right? So that's what I'm trying to do. That was a terrible little, little happy face. But uh, anyways, um, I love making these videos on YouTube. I've been uh, on YouTube for many, many years. Matter of fact, I started my channel like 14 years ago. But uh, I really didn't start taking YouTube uh, really super serious, to, uh, maybe like seven years ago, six, seven years ago. And then, you know, over the last number of years, I've just been full on just trying to post as much content that I know. And what I, what I really focus on is basic math to uh, advanced math or maybe like up to calculus. But as I put more effort into uh, YouTube, you know, my growth, you know, my performance has gotten better. And it's the same way in math. If you really want to improve in math, you got to put more effort in over a sustained period of time. And if you need help, well, ask for help, just like I'm asking you just, um, you know, for help to grow my YouTube channel because YouTube really does, you know, um, uh, measure how many people subscribe for each video and how many people hit that notification bell. You know, these things are important. And if you need help, go get help in math. And if you, not, if you like my teaching style, check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. And the stuff that we're talking about right now, I did indicate, will be in algebra courses. So I would recommend like my algebra one course, or for those of you that are not math students, you may want to check out my math skill rebuilder course, right? So I'll teach you everything you need to know about square roots and radicals. All right, so let's go ahead and continue on because we do have more work here. So we have the square root of 64 plus the square root of 8 over the square root of 64. Okay, so hopefully most of uh, you out there recognize the square root of 64 as 8. And that is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to re replace these square roots of 64 with 8. Okay, so we're going to take that uh, move. And here is what we have. Now, if you got to this point, you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, this is the problem um, I got, or this is the answer I got. Well, you were close, okay? But there is more work to do. Now, you might be saying, well, I'm not quite sure what we need to do here. Well, it has to do with this, okay? The square root of 8. We can simplify this further, all right? So let's go ahead and get into that right now. Okay, so the square root of 8, all right, this part of the problem we need to look at uh, something called perfect square factors, okay? Now, perfect squares, let me just show you some right here, and then I'll get back to this part of the problem, are numbers like the following, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36. Now, why do you think uh, these numbers are perfect squares? Well, because when I take the square roots of these numbers, I get lovely little perfect whole numbers, like the square root of 4 is 2, square root of 9, is 3 and so forth, right? So you want to be on a lookout for numbers like 4, 9, 16, 25, 36 as factors, okay? Factors of other numbers. So let me go ahead and show you this right now. So when we're simplifying square roots here, uh, the square root 8, I'm looking at 8 and I'm thinking, hey, are any of these perfect square factors in 8? Well, indeed, 8 is the same thing as 4 times 2 and 4 is a perfect square factor meaning that we can simplify the square root of 8. 
All right, so the square root of 8 is equal to, or is the same thing as, the square root of 4 times 2. And now we need to uh, use another property of square roots. All right, so we have one big square root over these factors, 4 times 2, and we could break this up into the own individual square roots. Okay, so this is going to be equal to the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. And, of course, we know what the square root of 4 is equal to. That is 2. So really, the square root of 8 is equal to 2 times the square root of 2, and that's what we're going to put right there. All right, so the square root of 8 is simplified down to 2 times the square root of 2, but we are not done. Okay, so you might be saying, what are you talking about, Mr. Two Math Man? There's more work. This is uh, just too crazy. Well, we're almost there, and uh, what we have is uh, some common factors. So we have 8, 2, and 8. So uh, 2 is a common factor between the numerator and denominator, and we can simplify this a bit further. So let's go ahead and factor out, missing a parenthesis right there, uh, a 2. All right, so um, you have 8 plus 2 times the square root of 2. I can factor out the greatest common factor of 2 in the numerator. All right, so uh, 2 is um, times, okay, and I have parentheses here, 2 times 4 plus the square root of 2. If I multiply that 2 back in, that's going to be 2 times uh, 4, of course that's 8, and 2 times the square root of 2 is 2 times the square root of 2 right here, right? So I'm just kind of using the, uh, the distributive property here, but 2 is a common factor between these two terms, right? So I'm going to factor it out, and now 8 is the same thing as 2 times 4, so I have a common factor. This is multiplication. This is 2 times this in parentheses, all right? So I have a common factor 2 here, common factor 2 here, and indeed, I'm going to cross-cancel those 2s right now. All right, so these 2s cross-cancel, and I'm left with what remains, which, of course, is 4 plus the square root of 2 over 4. All right, so as I indicated in the beginning of this problem, you know, this could uh, be a very simple problem, right? It could be. Unfortunately, it's not because a lot of people were like, oh, I could just cross-cancel these eights. Yay, I'm done. Well, unfortunately, that is wrong. And if this was a multiple-choice question, uh, you know, and if I was designing a, a test, that would be my first answer. Okay, in other words, I'd be like, all right, because you really don't know how much work is required. I would be like A, B, C, uh, D. My first answer would be one. Okay, because a lot of people I know are just going to, you know, cross cancel these terms. Of course, I'm sure I was doing this way back in the good old days as well. And it's easy. It's a, that's an easy mistake to make. So you got to be very careful when you're working on simplifying fractions. And of course, if you have square roots, you got to be extra, extra careful because you got to make sure you get all those perfect square factors out as well. All right, so hopefully this little video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.